In this video, I will show you how to implement user registration, authentication, and authorization using Identity Framework. Then, in the next video, I will show you how to create user roles and how to implement role-based authorization. So, for the moment, we already created the DB context class that allows us to connect to the database using Entity Framework. And now we need to install Identity Package. So, we can make a right click. Then manage NuGet packages. Let's click on browse. And here we can type identity entity framework. Let's select this package, which is identity.entityframework core. And because I created this application using .NET 7, I will choose version 7 of this package. Then install. So now the package is installed correctly, so we can close this page. Now we need to update our application DB context class to use identity. So let's go to application DB context. And instead of extending the DB context class of entity framework, we need to extend identity DB context. So just here we can add identity. Let's add the namespace. Then let's create a new migration file that allows us to create identity tables. So for the moment, we created these two migration files, so we can create the third migration file. So first let's save the file. Let's go to Package Manager console. Then let's write Add Migration. And you can create the migration, third migration. So now we have this new migration file that allows us to create identity tables in the database. So now we can update the database. So we can write update database. Now the tables are created successfully. So we can take a look at the database. So for the moment we have these tables. We need to refresh the connection to find the new tables. And now we can see that we have additional identity tables. Now we can add identity pages to this application. So let's make a right click on our application, then add, then new scaffolded item. Let's select identity, then identity, then add. So all of these files will be added to the application, but only the files that we will select can be modified. So in this video, I will show you how to modify the login page, the logout page, and the register page. So we need to select these three pages. Then let's select the application DB context class. We will not provide a user class because we will use the default class, which is identity user. Then let's click on add. Now identity pages are added successfully to this application. So here we can see that we have this new folder that contains identity pages that we can modify. So here we have the login page, the logout page, and the register page. Also in the shared folder, we can see that we have this new file, login partial. So this file contains this UL element. If the user is authenticated, we will display these two items. And if the user is not authenticated, then we will display these two items. So here we have the register item and the login item. Now we need to display this UL element in the layout file. So let's go to the layout file. And for the moment, we have this navbar that contains this UL element that contains these items. And also we have this UL element that contains this dropdown list. So after this UL element, we can display the new UL element. So we can add the partial element. Then let's provide the name of the file. So it is called underscore login partial. Now let's take a look at program.cs. So this is program.cs. And here we can see that we have this new statement that allows us to add identity services to the service container. 
So here we can see that we have this configuration, which means that the user account should be confirmed. So we can change this and here we can write false. Let's format this a little bit. Then let's run the application. So because the user is not authenticated, we can see that we have the register item and the login item. Let's click on a register and we obtain this register form. Let's click on login and this is the login form. Now I will show you how to update the register page and the login page. So to update the register page, we can go to register.cshtml that is available in the areas folder. And here we can see that we have this row that contains two columns. This is the first column that contains the form. And this is the second column. So we don't need the second column and we can delete it. So we can delete all of this div. Then we can display the first column in the center of the page. So using this bootstrap class, we can display this column in the center of the page. So here we have the title of the page. We don't need it, so let's delete it from here. We can delete this statement as well. And let's change the text of this H2 element. So here we can write register. Then let's update the login page. So here we can see that we have this row with two columns. This is the first column. And this is the second column. So we don't need the second column and we can delete it. Then let's display the first column in the center of the page. We can delete this H1 element. We can delete this statement as well. And let's change the text of this H2 element. So here we can write, please log in. Let's run the application. Let's click on a register. And you obtain this register form. Let's click on login. And this is the login form. So now let's create an account. Let's fill the form. Then a register. So now we are authenticated successfully and you can see that we have these two items in the navbar. If we click on this item, we obtain the user profile. So we can update the user profile, the email address, the password. And you can delete the user account. So now let's update the navbar. If the user is authenticated, we can display a drop down list. And if the user is not authenticated, then we can display two buttons, the register button and the login button. To update the navbar, we can go first to the file layout.cshtml. So here we can see that we have this drop down list. So we need to display this drop down list only if the user is authenticated. So we can cut the code of this li element. We can delete this ul element. We don't need it anymore. Then let's update the file login partial. So here, if the user is authenticated, then we can display the drop down list. So just here, we can paste the drop down list. And we can add these two items to the drop down list. So we can copy this item. Let's paste it. And here, let's write profile. Then let's change the URL. So we can copy the tag helpers from this item. So we can copy ASP area and ASP page. Let's delete these two tag helpers. And let's paste the code. Then we can change the text of this item. So just here we can write logout. Then let's change the URL. So we can copy the URL from this form. So we can copy this tag helper and this one. Now we can delete these two items. So if the user is authenticated, we will display this drop down list. Otherwise, we will display two buttons. So we need to change the classes of these two items. So we can delete these bootstrap classes. 
and you can replace them with these classes. So this is BTN and here we have BTN outline primary and this is a margin end of two units that allows us to make some space between the register button and the login button. So we can do the same thing with this item. So we can delete these two classes and you can replace them with BTN, BTN primary. Let's run the application. So now because the user is authenticated, we have this drop down list. Let's click on profile and this is the profile page. Let's click on logout. But here we have the logout page. So we need to click on this button to log out. And because we are logged out successfully, we have these two buttons. So instead of displaying the logout page, we need to disconnect the user. So now I will show you how to update the logout page. So to update the logout page, we need to go to the file logout.cshtml. So we don't need this HTML code, we can delete it. Then let's update the code, so we can make a right click, then view code. And here we have the onPost method that allows the user to log out. And we need to access this method using the get method. So we can change it and we can write on get. Like this, when we send a get request to the logout page, the user will be logged out. Also, we can modify this a little bit. So after the successful user logout, we can redirect the user to the home page. So we can cut this code and we can delete all of this code. And here we can write return, redirect to page, then let's provide the name of the page, which is the index page. So we have to write slash index. Let's test the application. Let's log in. Then log in. So now we are authenticated successfully. Let's click on log out. And now we are logged out successfully and we are redirected to the home page. So here we can see that we have these two buttons. Now let's log in. So now we are authenticated successfully. And here we can see that we have the products page and the contacts page. So if we click on contacts, we obtain this page. So this page should be accessible only to authenticated users. So we need to protect it using the authorize attribute. Also, we need to do the same thing with the contacts page. So here in the pages folder, we have the admin folder that contains two folders, contacts and products. And we need to protect all the pages of these two folders. So only the authenticated user should be able to access to all of these pages. So we need to update the different page models. Let's start with this one. So it is delete.cshtml.cs. And we need to decorate this class with the authorize attribute. Let's do the same thing with the details page. So using the authorized attribute, only the authenticated user will be able to access to the page. Now let's test the application. So now we are authenticated successfully, so we should be able to access to the different pages. So if we click on products, we can see that we can access to this page. Now let's copy the URL. Then let's log out. Let's paste the URL here. And because we are not authenticated, we are redirected to the login page. So for the moment, we created an account without any role and you can find it in the database. So we can find it in ASP.NET users. So here we can make a right click, 
then show table data. And you can see that we have this user. So for the moment, this user has no role. So we can take a look at the roles table. So it is called ASP.NET roles. And here we can see that we don't have any user role. Now I will show you how to delete the user account. So for the moment we have this account and you can delete it using the application. So here let's log in. Then profile. Then personal data. Then delete. And to delete the account we need to provide the password. Then delete. So now the account has been deleted and we are disconnected. We can check the database. So let's refresh the table. And here we can see that we don't have the user anymore. In the next video, I will show you how to create roles and how to implement the role-based authorization. You can find the video link in the description.